Hey Shell Squad, on this episode we're going to cover turtles brumation and hibernation. This is a very popular topic this time of year because winter is here and we all want what's best for our turtles, which is pretty cool. In this video I'm going to explain the difference between hibernation and brumation, when to hibernate, when not to hibernate, what to expect while hibernating, some indoor methods and some outdoor methods for how I do checkups season as this can be uh, a season that turtles still can get sick unfortunately. I've been keeping diamondback terrapins over 15 years at this point, some spotted as well as some adopted red earth sliders, uh, some striped neck musk turtles, you know it's winter in my house when you start to see things like this behind me. Uh, these are little bird feeders here. Um, they have peanut butter and then like nuts on them. Uh, we have quite a selection for the birds that like to live in our area. If you clicked on this video, you're wanting to know what is brumation. Well, brumation is very similar to hibernation. What, you know, bears do in the winter, they kind of sleep it off. But with cold-blooded animals like your turtle, um, it's a little bit different because they're still awake and their metabolism is slowing down. So it seems like they're not doing as much and they're sleeping, uh, but they're not. They are awake and they will still drink and they're still going to show a lot more activity on those rogue warmer days. So the next question is, should I brumate my turtle? The most important thing to know is that not all turtles brumate. So know your species, um, which can be done with this simple Google search for your turtle species and looking at the winter climates in those areas and then try to mimic those conditions. Because a turtle can brumate doesn't mean you should let them. I brumate my adult terrapins, spotteds, and redder sliders uh, because one, they meet all of my brumation criteria, but also because I have much more success with reproduction in this way. So let's get into the brumation criteria. Uh, criteria number one, I usually make sure that they are more than a few years old. Number two, I make sure they are thriving. This means they're eating well and they're showing a lot of activity. Um, if you change the environment around, it doesn't seem to bother them or stop their uh, feeding or activity very much. Number three, no signs of illness or disease. Stay tuned for videos covering some of those. Number four, that I'm able to do health checkups on them. If for some reason I can't do a health checkup on the turtle, um, say that they're not at my house or whatever, I, I don't brumate them. And my last criteria is to make sure they're safe from predators. If you're brumating indoors, this is going to be a no-brainer. Um, but if you're brumating outdoors, it can be very tricky to make predator safe enclosures during brumation. I'm currently working on a video about common signs of illnesses and diseases for your turtle, which will also cover this winter season. It will be coming out soon to help you with your winter checkups. To you, those of you that are keeping your turtle warm through the winter, make sure that the habitat is away from drafty areas as like uh, an open window, a door, Maybe a drafty hallway whenever a door opens, it creates a real cold draft. All right, so let's prepare your turtle for brumation. I always start with clean water. And number two, I wanna get weights on all my turtles. I wanna get dry weights. And then during my health checkups, I actually um, start weighing them. Typically, they'll lose about 10% of their body weight during brumation, uh, which I think is normal. But if one turtle is losing weight much faster than the others, you may need to bring them out of brumation sooner than the rest. As your night temperatures drop and the daylight shortens, start dropping the temperature of your turtle's water about three degrees a week and the light by 30 to 60 minutes a week. At some point, your turtle will stop eating. This is normal. Um, I stop feeding my turtles altogether. Um, once my water temperature gets below 73 degrees, if the temperatures drop too fast and there's still food in the stomachs, the food can actually spoil in their gut faster than it could be digested and it can go bad and actually kill your animal. 
because of this, I make sure my turtles have at least two weeks of a fasting period before I throw them into brumation. Another tip is to turn off the basking light because they can easily regulate their temperature with the basking light alone, despite whatever temperature the water's at. My water temperatures usually get down in the 55 to 65 degrees Fahrenheit uh, for my animals. Um, then I start my health checks every two to three weeks. So depending on your species, brumation can last anywhere from three weeks to four months. So make sure you know your species. Some of the cool brumating behaviors you're commonly going to see is this slow movement. Uh, they look less alert, little to no appetite. You see them kind of gliding slowly through the water than usual. Um, they're going to prefer darker areas in the water, out of the water, or burrow themselves in the sand or soil. This is also the part of brumation where people start worrying that their animal is dead. Their turtle can sometimes be found uh, motionless in a position that's not normal for your turtle. It's a different behavior. If you have a filter flow rate that's pretty strong, you can actually see them sleeping in water while they're floating around. <laughs> but regardless of what you see, if they are keeping weight and they don't look ill, they are usually fine. Noticing them slowing down physically is completely normal, including sleeping more and a very decreased appetite, or for me, no appetite at all. So the next popular question is, can I brumate my turtle outdoors? It's natural, right? So that must be the best thing for them. Well, I've had a very hard time brumating anything outdoors with any consistency. I highly recommend indoors. So you can safely brumate your turtle outdoors. Then I do have some recommendations for you. First is to make sure your climate is similar to that of the turtle's natural climate to decrease the chances of complications during brumation. Also, make sure no predators can get to your turtle. I've seen chicken wire get scratched open by raccoons so that you know trying to feed on vulnerable turtles that won't move at this point because they're too cold keep in mind food might be very scarce for the predators in your area as well um, so they may be very desperate to make a meal of your pet if your area frequently gets rogue warm spells uh, maybe try a plastic mesh tarp over the top um, of your pond um, if it's small enough um, and that should help keep the water temperature down and make it harder for big birds of prey uh, to spot your turtle. Turtles naturally enjoy hiding in the shade um, in their weakened state uh, anyway, so uh, provide plenty of shade and hiding places. Also, since you're not going to be feeding them, uh, feel free to lower your pond filter flow rate. Um, and that should make it easier for the turtles to get around to hiding spaces and also make it easier for them to um, get up for air if they're not fighting the current. Do your homework if you're doing outdoor brumation. It's very tough and good on you if you can. Um, I can't, so, but what I can do is go over how I brumate my turtles indoors. So indoors, I have complete control over my turtle's environment. So I'm going to be able to control all the variables I spoke about at the beginning of the video, um, mostly regarding the lighting and temperature. But what's really nice is I'm going to be able to easily do a health check on my turtle to check for any signs of disease. The only disease I've ever experienced brumating my turtles is skin fungus. Um, I'm also working on a video uh, how I manage skin fungus on any of my pets before opting to go to a vet. Just like outdoors, indoors, I also decrease the flow rate on my filter so my turtles have an easier time swimming and I won't be feeding them. So I'm not worried about the filter doing an inadequate job. And what I do for some of my setups indoors is decrease the water depth so that my turtles don't have to burn too much energy um, when they're trying to surface for air. But that is not necessary at all, um, unless you got a very deep indoor pond. Typically for any water species, anything about two feet deep is gonna be fine. And congratulations, you have now successfully brumated your turtle. 
But what now? Well, let's talk about waking up your animal. So usually as the night temperatures get above 50 degrees Fahrenheit or warmer, uh, your turtles are going to start to show less signs of brumation and they're going to slowly transition into their normal state. They will still not eat for another week or two until their bodies are ready. I increase my water temperature by 5 degrees a week until I hit 75 degrees. And I also increase my lighting cycle by about 45 minutes a week as well. Usually I start doing this around late February or March. Um, but if you want to warm up your shelled friends earlier, um, you definitely can because you are doing an indoor brumation setup. So if you made it to this part of the video, thank you very much. A couple other videos I'm working on is uh, what happens when your turtle overheats and also a video on this amazing DIY uh, pond or um, tank filter that can work in tandem with other filters as well so you don't need to have an extra water pump. And they're incredible for managing large bio loads which means they are incredible for your aquatic turtle. So please consider subscribing to catch that content when it's available. Please share this video with someone who would like it. And thanks for watching, my friends. Stay Sheltastic.